morning everyone, my name is Cindy and I will be taking over ITA's Instagram account from South Korea. So I'm going to do just a quick intro about me. Um, so my name is Cindy, uh, I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, USA um, and I took my TEFL certification back in May of 2020. Um, I did sign up to do the intense course one in person, um, but due to COVID-19, it was turned into online, um, which was very interesting, very fun, and I loved it. Um, and I am currently here in South Korea through the EPIC program. Um, I am currently teaching at two middle schools, um, but I have taught at an elementary school before. I am starting my third year here. Um, I first came to Korea back in 2021, part of the spring intake. So if you have any questions about Korea, um, the TEFL courses, or, um, you know, EPIC program, or anything of that nature, make sure to ask me here. Alrighty, so I just finished my class for second grade. It is a little noisy right now. Um, the students have their 10 minute break. Um, but I did want to show you my classroom. So, uh, this is my English classroom. As you can see, some students are passing by. It's pretty big. We do have a whiteboard as well as a chalkboard. Um, I try to have English posters around just to encourage the students to read a little bit and practice um, or their English skills. My school has three buildings. That whole entire building over there is just for the third years in middle school. Then we have our music and arts building. And then our gym and our fields are all the way in the back. And then of course we have the Lala view of Donghye Uh Donghye is located over in Gangwondo. Um, and the more known cities in Gangwondo are Chuncheon or Gangneung. Um, Gangneung is actually 30 minutes away from Donghye, which is really nice. Um, or you can head a little more south over to Samcheok. Uh, but Donghye is generally a smaller city <laughs> in Gangwondo. Um, it uh, definitely um, does give a bit of a city vibe. However, it is still quite small, but very enjoyable. A lot of people from Seoul tend to come over to Donghye to relax at the beaches or get a weekend away for camping or other activities. Okay, so I'm going to start answering some questions. I've been getting a lot about asking about the EPIC program as well as visa process and what it's like teaching um, through the EPIC program as well as living here in Korea. Um, so the EPIC program I do highly recommend. Um, my experience has been amazing. The placement school that we're at, which is my main school today, um, is been amazing. They're so welcoming. They try to involve you in everything. Um, and they really do try to take care of you, which is really nice. Um, so my experience has been amazing, and I wish I didn't have to change schools um, soon. But you know, that's just, you know how the program is. Um, the visa process for me when I first arrived, uh, as soon as I arrived into my placement city, um, we went straight into the immigration office. So it took maybe about a week or so to get it. I know some have taken about a month. So yeah, so the visa process really depends on who's handling your case. My case what, took about one to two weeks. My friends or others that I've heard of had taken about a month or so. Um, but to answer a different question, what are some pros or cons of living in Korea in both teaching ESL? So some pros, um, seeing progress in my students. I'm in a rural province, so we don't have as many resources as other cities like Seoul or Busan. Um, so getting to see their progress in school, interacting with my students a lot in the hallway, um, creating this type of community in my school is always a big plus. Um, living here in Korea, there's a lot of things that are quite efficient um, that I would have never thought of or, you know, sometimes I'd be like, why didn't we think of that in, you know, in the U.S. or something like that. Some cons is that being in rural, we do have limited resources um, as well as things like banks or grocery stores are not always available. Banks do close within a working hour, so you do have... So to kind of continue on from the other question, um, banks do close early. They close around 4.30, and my working day is from 8.40 to 4.40, so I barely miss it, so I do sometimes have to use my personal time to make it to the bank as they are not open on the weekends. And grocery stores like Emart or Home Plus here 
Um, they do close on certain Sundays of the month, so you do have to remember when they are closed and when they are open for those Sundays, which can be a little tricky sometimes. Um, but do I make enough money to live a good life? I would say yes. Um, I do try to budget as much as I can um, to make sure I'm saving something as well. But I do live a pretty comfortable life, and I do have times where I will splurge a little bit here or there. Um, so I do say I, have, I do make enough money to live a pretty decent life. Alrighty, so I just finished my day here at school. So I need to go and get some dinner. Okay, so I'm currently actually downtown, um, so I just wanted to show you a little bit. We have our Daiso over there. Um, we have uh, cafes over here, some bars, convenience stores. Our movie theater is right up here. Um, a lot of doctor's offices, a Dunkin' Donuts. Um, we have Eat Mart all the way over there. Okay, so that was all over there, so if you keep walking straight and coming over this way, we have our big uh, intersection uh, that has our biggest crosswalk over here. We do have a big roundabout just over here, and uh, during Christmas, you'll see the Christmas tree put up over in the big circle. But yeah, this is our main downtown area this is in Jeonggukdong um, Dong is broken up into different uh, city sections which we call Dong uh, so this is Jeonggukdong our main downtown area we also have Bukpyeong and which is down south and then Mukgo which is more up north so I actually decided to have dinner with a friend over at the beach this is our beach it is quite small Usually we have a lot of people migrate from the west coast over to the east coast to watch the new uh, New Year sunrise um, on New Year's Day. Um, we do have a bigger beach than this one. It is a way north past Mugo in an area called Mangsang. So it's starting to head over closer to Gangneung if you know where Gangneung is. Um, but definitely since the weather is really nice today, it's very warm, we decided to come to the beach. Okay, so going back to the question, so making friends. I came um, during COVID, so we weren't really able to meet a lot. Um, when I first arrived, we had a coordinator in our city to kind of help connect everybody to each other. Um, especially since in Donghae, we don't have many foreign teachers here. Um, so it was a small, tight-knit community to, uh, to assimilate to. Um, however, our coordinator position was removed, so now that we get new teachers, the education office coordinator lets us know who's um, new and so we can connect to them. But when I started, my co-teachers were my friends <laughs> because I was the only born teacher in both of my schools. Um, but then I started talking to other teachers. Um, other teachers would start talking to me in English. Um, but I am friends with the other foreign teachers here who are part of the EPIC program as well as other um, English teachers from other schools as well. Okay, so how many students do I teach? So I teach at two schools. Um, my class sizes range from 24 up to 30 students. Um, at my travel school, I teach the whole entire class, which is about 27 to 28 students, um, with a co-teacher, of course. And then at my main school, I do have bigger class sizes, which is about 30. Um, and I do have some that are 24. However, with all of my grades, um, in that in my main school I split it with our conversational teacher which is a Korean native speaker um, who has learned English and is pretty proficient in the language to be able to teach it as if they were the native speaker um, so we split it uh, split half the class so 15 for her 15 for me and then um, at the next semester we would swap uh, sides so group A group B and then we would swap so I would have group B and she would have group A second semester Okay, so I will say that the percentage of people speaking English, at least in my city, is quite low just because I do live in a uh, rural province. Um, 
but for this job it is not required for you to speak Korean um, but I do highly recommend for you to learn Korean just because you are in a country whose main language is Korean um, and it will definitely help you navigate through the country there are a lot of things that do help foreigners who do speak English um, to navigate through and there are definitely apps that will help you to help navigate through that are set in English but I do highly recommend learning at least the most basic Korean to just kind of help ease the navigation of the country. Okay so this is a really good question. Yes I did have to get a new bank account. I do still have a bank account back at home in my home country um, but I also have a bank account here just because when my school pays me it's easier for them to put it into my Korean bank account than if I were to put it in my home account due to the uh, exchange. Did I have to get a new phone number? Yes, I am in a new, different country, so I, it's a lot easier to use a phone number based off the country versus um, a phone number internationally. So I did have to get a new bank account and a new phone number. The, both of them, uh, both of the processes my co-teacher had helped me with, so it definitely made it a lot easier. However, um, it is doable to do it on your own. The bank account is a little bit more trickier to do on your own, but the phone number for sure is a lot easy. Getting around Korea is actually very easy. There are a bunch of apps to help you. However, if you do need to buy a ticket through the app, you do need an ARC card to uh, be able to purchase. Um, just because it's everything here in Korea is tied to your name on that ARC card and all the information, uh, the number and everything. Um, but it is fairly easy. Most stations have machines or tellers to buy a ticket from. Uh, the bus stops also have bus schedules on their bus times. They're mainly accurate. Um, there are taxis all around. Some cities have subways. Um, and now we have actually scooters also so that you can quickly rent and just scoot around in the city. Okay, so before I end this ITA takeover, I'm just going to kind of do an overview of what my typical teaching schedule is like. So I teach 22 classes, which includes one after school club, which takes place on Friday afternoons after school, of course, um, which does include the first, second, and third years of middle school. Um, and it's mainly a conversational club, um, but we do cover some grammar, grammar things or anything that the students would like to touch upon, whether it's culture um, around the world or um, other you know expressions to learn um, for daily use of English uh, as well as I teach travel schools twice a week um, Monday mornings I uh, go to my travel school to teach first grade or first years um, and then Friday mornings I teach third years in middle school and then I go back to my main school um, because I do have to travel a lot between schools so I do have to travel between two schools twice a week. There is public, tra public transportation for me to take, such as buses, if not taxis. Um, but I personally actually do have a car. I bought my car last year in July. Um, so I got my dr Korean driver's license as well as bought a car here all on my own. Um, so if you have any questions about car buying, um, or any other questions about living in Korea or teaching, you can definitely ask me here in my personal Instagram account. Um, but yeah, so I do drive to and from school every single day. Um, and some other things is that um, even though I do live in a rural, I it is a city, so we do have a lot of options um, and a lot of um, different buses to take in our city. Um, they all tend to follow the same route. Um, but usually every 10 to 15 minutes, you will find a bus to take you at least into downtown area. So my typical teaching day starts around 8.40 and it ends around 4.40. Um, that does include the time for the after school club. And uh, sometimes my travel school asks me to participate in their spelling bee contest. Um, my main school has started doing spelling bee contests last year as well. Um, but typically those are done also after school, but still within the working hour time frame. Um, we do get a lot of red days off. Red days are just national holidays. Um, for example, we have one coming up, which is Children's Day. And then another 
one is Buddha's birthday, all in the same month. Um, so depending on when those holidays fall, um, if they fall on a weekend, there are certain holidays where they will get the following Monday off, um, which is nice. Um, for Children's Day example, we get Friday off because it's on a Friday, so we do have a three-day weekend. And Buddha's birthday is actually on a Saturday, so we do get the Monday following off. So since I'm a middle school teacher, um, my lessons are 45 minutes long. Students do get about a 10 minute break between each class. Um, typically in a middle school is when they use a bell system. Um, I have taught elementary previously. Those lessons are 40 minutes with um, little to no break in between. Um, classes just go directly um, behind one another, um, but students do get designated times um, so they'll study for two hours and then they'll get a 30 minute break and then they'll study again for an hour or two and then they'll have lunch. Um, at least that's how my elementary school worked. Um, and with though, with elementary, you teach with the homeroom teachers. Sometimes you do get a co designated co-teacher, but in my experience and from the stories that I've heard, many people just teach with homeroom teachers and um, it's not always the case that they speak English. Um, so, so because you are teaching with homeroom teachers, there will be a variety of English levels. There will be some te homeroom teachers that will speak excellent English, and then other homeroom teachers that will have limited English skills. Um, it was definitely quite an interesting uh, time period in my teaching career to be able to teach with a variety of homeroom teachers at my elementary school. Um, it is definitely a great experience that I will keep dear to my heart. I have definitely learned a lot. So if you have any questions about elementary or middle school life, feel free to contact me here. If you have any questions about EPIC program or living here in Korea, Korea life, buying a car, whatever it is, feel free to contact me here. I hope you enjoyed my ITA takeover from Donghaeji, South Korea. If you are ever in Korea, please visit Donghae. We are such a hidden jewel of Gangwon-do. Um, we do have a lot to offer. We are the only city that has a natural cave in the center of it. So if you would like to see a cave in the middle of a city, Donghae is the place to be. We have hiking, camping, beaches, cafes, seafood is amazing. Everything you want, it's here in Donghae. It's such a hidden jewel. Definitely check us out. But this is it. Have a great one, guys. Yeah.